But when it comes to awards, I always try to keep my expectation levels low mm. because over the years, it has taught me that my value and my identity is not in the, in the awards that I win. For me, the important part in what I do is the people's lives that I've touched. Mm. That, for me, sets it apart. It's bigger than the awards. Finding myself fulfilling God's purpose for my life is bigger than any award that I could ever get. 702. The upside of failure. Sometimes failure is the foundation of greatest success stories. Dagozo, welcome. Thank you for accepting my invite. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Isn't it weird that we've known each other this long, but it's the first time we're sitting like this? Very, very weird. Right? Because it, it kind of feels like, I was like, I feel like we've done this before, but not But we actually. never have, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so, you know, um, just in preparation for the interview, I was trying to remember when we first met. And oh, I was like, word. I can't actually remember. I don't remember either. I like, don't remember. It, and it was a while ago. It was a while ago. I I suspect it was when I was musical directing and producing Africa. I suspect maybe it like a decade be. or so it ago, eight, yeah. eight, nine years ago or so. I yeah. think so. Yeah, I think I think poss- possibly eight years ago. But what I do remember is thinking. Um, having played around enough times in the gospel space in different capacities, yeah. is I thought to myself, she's so refreshing. Because we are very nostalgic, we love our hymns. <laughs> yeah. you know? We're not letting them go anytime soon. <laughs> all of those, they're all going to be recorded and recorded over and over yeah. again. But I'm wondering if, if that... The, the, your experience and joyous celebration instilled something in you that said, ooh, I can actually do the new stuff quite easily and be experimental with my sound. Absolutely. I kind of feel like it did. And um, ironically, I remember when, when I first started um, a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we won't put numbers to it. <laughs> um, I remember I was I was think I think I was possibly like thirteen or fourteen or fifteen around around about that age, and um, I was in Durban at the time, and I met and I'm and I was in an elevator with one of industry people that I actually looked up to at that mm. time, and um, that person said to me, um, "You do realize that you have an amazing voice, but I feel like your parents are just wasting their time, you know, trying to do this kind of gospel mm. because right now the sound is the traditional kind mm. of gospel. Um, this is not going to work. Why not just do R and B or um, go to the pop side mm. because your voice is great, but this kind of gospel that you're trying to do is not going to sell. It's not going to work. Mm. You should really think about it. So I was like there, yeah, 14, 14, 15 year old, and I was so heartbroken." Oh man! Um, you know, because this was someone that I'd look up to. You know, I was like, how could you know? I was expecting like something encouraging. Mm. You know, go on, go on. You can do this, and really was crushing at that point. That's and why they say you shouldn't meet your heroes, right? <laughs> because then suddenly they're human, and then you realize, <laughs> oh boy, <Yes. laughs> you know. And I felt, I felt really, really. I was disappointed, but more than anything, I was really hurt um, by their words. And my response to them was that. Um, but I feel like this is what God has called me to do. Mm. And this is this is who I am. I can't change who I am and I can't change who I believe God has called me to be to be. And and I remember afterwards that person afterwards said, No, don't try to spiritualize it. This is the real life. This is the real world. And you know, I'd love to see what that person has to say now. But I, I was about to say, are they are they still in the are they alive firstly? They are alive. Are they, they are still, alive. Are they recording and out there? I do you know what you know what I think? Yeah. I think they even forgot they had that conversation with you. Highly possible. Nah, because Highly possible. it might have been like a passing by, but what they don't realize is what is it what left a big a lasting mark. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And and I I love how though um in my heart of hearts, I feel like something in you did need to be crushed for you to be built differently. Absolutely. It definitely did. 
So what did. came out of that? Like you had this crushed moment at yeah. 15, 16, like just as a dolly dolly <laughs> is happening, <laughs> you know, you're discovering your voice, your sound. Yeah. Um, what do you think shifted in you for, for the positive? Um, what I can tell you is that I was, I'm, I'm truly blessed to have had amazing parents. Um, God really blessed me. He, uh, like I feel like I'm God's favorite because of the the parents that He yes. gave me. Um, when when I went back home that day, I told my mom and my dad the encounter that I had, mm. and my mom went up all up in flames. <laughs> 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 you know, going full blown Zulu girl. Yes. Um, in that moment, but ultimately, what my parents reminded me is from that conversation was that Dogozo at the end of the day it doesn't matter what people say about you what matters is what god has said about you mm. and that stands that cannot be changed that cannot be changed by the words of people that cannot be changed by the thoughts of people what god has said about you stands mm. and you go with that that is more than that is more important than what ever can be said by anyone else and that for me was the first step i was like okay so it's going to happen. I'm definitely going to get some people along the way who are going to um, throw words at me. But I kept that in my bag all those years. That mm. It doesn't matter what people say. But what matters is what God has said about me. And that settles it. Mm. And, and, and you, like it's so interesting that you use that particular wording with what happened over the past couple of weeks with you winning at the Psalmers and everybody's speaking about some of the things that uh, Kelly Kumalo was saying online. Yeah. Um, how, how did you absorb that? Because it's so difficult in our industry, as big as it is, it's very small. We all know each other. Yeah. Somewhere and somehow, right? Yeah, yeah. And you can take it with a pinch of salt. You can also be like, mm, I deserve this. Or like, how did you actually absorb that? You know, it's... Because now the conversation took a different turn it, yeah, to it, it just did. being about your moment. Yeah, no, it did. And I think for me, I'm I'm always I'm I'm someone who always tries to be mindful of the fact of who I am and mm -hmm. the kind of person that I am. And um I'm I'm someone who's very private as well and who tries to, you know, you know, mm. um, is pity pity. So I try to I keep to myself, even when I'm traveling with a for lack of a better word, whether I have performances or gigs, um, I do what I do and then and I leave because I'm someone who keeps to myself. Um, some people even have the notion that I think I'm better than others and yeah, jailer, but that's not really, I'm an introvert. The response you know? is you think I'm better than you <laughs> and that's your problem. You know, <laughs> Naturally, I'm an introvert. Yes. My personality is that, mm. you know, um, I'm a shy person. Ultimately, I just want to disappear, you know, because mm. even this gift for me is is just weird. It's, it's, it's crazy. It doesn't make sense to me because my personality and the gift doesn't really match, you know, which kind of makes you think about characters in the Bible who had the same issues, right. you know, kind of like how Moses um, was um, tasked to lead the children of Israel, but he he was a stutterer, you know, he had issues with speaking, but he was tasked to speak with millions to millions of people, and he still was able to do that, which also ultimately just makes you see that God is just incredible in how he chooses, mm. he picks and chooses his people. But, you know, for me, ultimately going through that, I think it was just... You know how the Bible, well, obviously, I'm, I'm a gospel music minister, so the Bible will always be a reference for me, mm. and God will always be my foundation. Um, there's, there's a verse in the Bible that says, um, be anxious of nothing, but in all things through prayer and supplication, make mm. your requests known unto God. Um, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Mm. That was what led me that there afterwards was mm. I was like God just let your peace guard my heart and mind mm. that's all you know with everything that's going on with all the noise just let your peace guide my heart and my mind that's why I didn't even want to say anything because I had nothing to say mm. and I still don't have anything to say about mm. that I'm just being led by the peace of God and look I I, I also fully respect that because I think in my public platform public self life I'm the same the introvert part of me yeah comes to play where I'm like 
I'm getting anxiety because I'm in a mall. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it doesn't that make is sense. So mean. I hate malls. I was there yesterday at Mall of Africa for work, and the, I'm like, it's not even Christmas, guys. Why is it's it so too full? Many people. Yes. But, but even with that, you know. I recall watching the, I can't remember which Beyonce documentary it was. It might have been four. Mm. Now, we know Beyonce is at that point in her career. She says nothing. Yeah. Like the recent Absolutely one was, nothing. oh, she's lightening her skin. <laughs> oh, more. So she's, she's quiet, right? Yeah. But in this documentary, there was a part where she was presenting her music to the label execs. Mm. And she's like, I hope they like it. I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my ish. Like she said that to camera. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, I imagine moments where she didn't win a Grammy yeah. or she was robbed like the time Kanye West went up, you know. <laughs> and it's like she will always be prim and proper in person. Yeah. But at home, God, Jay-Z, she's like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Do you ever have those real moments, though? <laughs> Not necessarily about this, but in general, where yeah. in your private safe space, you can be like, how, 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 but where you say to your husband, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. You have those where like the verses just disappear. <laughs> definitely. The, the, I'm the human. I'm human. I'm human. Like, <laughs> I'm definitely human. I think, I think that's the beauty of sharing um, our lives with, with people, you know, people who have created a safe space for us to be who we want to be whenever we want to be that thing. And it's, I, I, I don't, the, I love my family because with them, I never have to pretend. I never have to um, put up a straight face. I never have to be prim and proper with them. I can just walk out of my, in a gown. I can yes. rock up in my sister's place wearing my gown and just sit on the couch and not do anything. You know, I don't have to be, um, you know, this persona that mm. everybody is like, no button doors on Bambo is not supposed to do that. You know, at home... Uh, I'm just truly blessed with that because I've, I've, I've really, um, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for my family because then I can just be myself and, and they know the crazy side. They, they, if you want to know the crazy side, I just feel side, like she's here. They know the crazy, <laughs> and ironically, I'm not even there. I'm not, I'm not this one. Which I'm one more, are you? I'm the naughty one. <laughs> Please don't tell me you accidentally <laughs> shared like a diss meme to your pasta by mistake. No. <laughs> You're careful too. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I am the naughty one. I do go meme crazy in, in our family yes. um, group, WhatsApp group. Um, yeah, but I, I'm the naughty one. I'm not the... Yes, my my sister is this one. Oh, she's the yeah. She's if, the. If 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 you're listening and me. you're wondering what we're talking about now, it's the head snapping <laughs> where suddenly you're like, "What did you say about me?" <laughs> so she's the one that would probably be chief defender of you. Absolutely, mm. she is. She is. She was. I remember on the Sunday. Um, they all came to my house and we were all excited. And she went on a full on rant. <laughs> um, and I I was just sitting there like. Just yeah. let it go. Yes. And yes. but I think I think that's just her being the big sister and, and yes. being overprotective yes. of her sister. And also the fact that they know what we've been through. They know mm. what it what it has taken for me to be where I am today. They know the struggles. Mm. They know the pain. They know the heartbreak. They know um the moments that I've gone through where I felt like I was robbed, you know, mm. where I felt I deserved a certain treatment and I didn't get it. But I just I would just keep quiet and move on silently without making a noise they know every single mm. step that i've taken to be where i am so um and and that's why she went on full rant yes. about it you know and and i was just sitting quietly i was like but god is good guys yes, yes. <laughs> and he truly is yeah so let me congratulate you on the phenomenal i mean three wins in one night including best female artist um it is such a feat and we don't even need to go into the details of the why and the whatevers. It's your time. I, I firmly believe everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. It is your time. And I'm wondering, you know, in what we've been talking about, do you feel the pressure of the being pasta, being, you know, <laughs> of being a gospel artist yeah. over and above being a public figure? On top of that, 
everybody knows you are married, who you are married to. Yeah. But real life is happening. You know, Michelle Obama, I love when she's like, I couldn't stand this man for 10 for years. For 10 years. But I like, saw that. Even during, <laughs> during the, the elections, she had to be there smiling even when she wanted to roll her eyes at this guy, right? <laughs> Do you feel the pressure as a wife, as all of the roles that you play that yeah. you aren't actually given grace to be human and you also happen to be in a space where Christians can be the most judgmental Absolutely. and the most yeah. unfair and yeah. selective and how they apply them to yeah. you. I'm sorry, but we saw the top of your cleavage. <laughs> it should have been polo neck. <laughs> and then they'll put a marker and then, and, then, and, then they, and then they add a piece of cloth on and that also, chest. And also, where's the duku? Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. There is definitely um, pressure. And and I think I've, I've learned to take it with a pinch of salt um, over the years. I've learned that, um, you know, it is what it is. It is mm. what it is, you know. Um, we are in the public eye. I am in the public eye. And... I decided to do this, you know, ultimately. And people will always have an opinion. People will always have something to say. But I think for me, one of the biggest um, things that I had to overcome was the pressure that I put on myself, mm. which can also be very dangerous at times um, because it can lead to me feeling like I'm not, um, I'm not enough. Mm. Um, for the roles that I'm playing, I, I feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm not enough myself. Mm. Um, maybe there's this should be more that I can do. When ultimately, when I get when we get down to the actual thing, I'm actually doing all that I can. Mm. You know, I'm doing the best that I can. You know, I think for me, the most difficult pressure that I had to learn to manage the most was the pressure that I put on myself. Mm. That was the worst for me because it also even pushed me down into depression because mm. I was the one who was putting that pressure on myself. It wasn't my husband. It wasn't my kids. It wasn't the church, but it was me trying by all means to be everything to everyone, but nothing to myself, mm. you know, and I had to learn what to end. You can't do that to yourself. You do the best you can when you can do it and also make sure that you also make time for yourself as well. And, and, and that for me, I think has probably been one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in the past couple of years is there a verse that speaks to women doing too much and not enough for themselves that we need to refer to because we need it we, <laughs> need, we need that verse you know because also like as you were speaking um in my therapy session this week i said to my therapist I'm so worried I'm messing this person up. And then he's going to be in this chair telling about how I messed him up, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's the mom pressure, which adds yo, some A other level. Ooh, the, mom, the mom pressure one, right? Yeah. So who, who and what do you turn to mm. for that conversation with self outside of God? Yeah. Because there are moments, yes, God provides strength, in, in ways that we, we, we can't even articulate verbally. Yeah. But who is the person that you can be like, yo, in in my I'm tired of myself. I'm sick of my own yeah. demands on myself. Like I'm dying. Yes. Like, yo, it's a lot. Um apart from God, I think I've I've truly been blessed to be surrounded with sisters. And and um, you know, every now and then they they and ironically, it's amazing how when when God gives you with just sisters who can just sense when something is off about you mm. and they can feel, uh -uh, no, she's not okay. And they'd give me a call and be like, let's go out for lunch. Mm. They don't even say, do you no, need anything? They no. just say, let's go. They don't even ask me what's going on. Are you okay? What's up? What's up? They're like, no, let's go. Let's go out for, for lunch. Um, give me a day. And I'm like, okay, which day? And I'm also eager because I'm overwhelmed. You know, I feel like I'm drowning, you know. And then when I sit with them and I talk and I tell them and I pour out how I'm feeling. And and it's it, it really is a blessing to have sisters who can be like, you know, it's okay. You don't have to do it all. Mm. you know and the thing is because ultimately you don't have the capacity mm. 
mm. to do it all. You don't have the strength to do it all. Just do what you can and do it the best way that you can. You know, and those gentle reminders of having sisters and also hearing them um, speaking about what they feel and how they're going through also helps me see that, you know, I'm actually not alone. You know, because sometimes we feel like, I feel like I'm the only person that feels this way. I'm the only person that feels like I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm drowning. I am feel like I'm overwhelmed. I feel alone. But ultimately, there are others who are actually going through the same thing. And when we talk amongst each other and share our pain and, and, and give each other tips and advices, you know, um, it really does help, you know. Mm. And and I also love therapy as well, you know. Get a great therapist. There's, um, especially in the church community, there's this notion that therapy and God do not go together. I believe that God and therapy works, you know. Um, God uses people, you know. God will use people to speak to you and to minister to you and to help you through the 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 you know the 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 the, the, the way of life, you mm. know. The same way He's able to use doctors to heal your body when you're sick, He's also able to use therapists as well, you know. And Thank that for you me. For saying that is, is so important i'm glad you're saying that because i think many people would need to hear that from someone like yourself yeah um there's a thing called spiritual bypassing yeah where you're trying to treat depression with a pasta yeah. And I'm like, would you go to your dentist for your gynecological issues? The answer is no. <laughs> so we also need to, you know, they yeah. work in tandem. They work together. To, to, together. Yeah. Um, and even um, there are great pastors out there who'll be like, actually, here's an amazing There's, therapist. Yeah, yeah that who, I know. Yes, who you can speak to your pastor and mention the psychological things you're going mm. through. But you can also speak to your therapist and say, I'm conflicted actually, spiritually mm. about this. Can you help me talk through the emotions? emotions can you help me talk through yeah. the feelings so had you not won yeah. like let's say you didn't win any of them yeah <laughs> would you have felt like a failure would you have felt like it was a fail no mm. no i think because i've lost so many times <laughs> <laughs> love your honest you're like i'm used to i'm comfortable <laughs> you know what i even suspect hey i i know i know so this is what i suspect yeah i suspect because i sometimes do this you know when you don't pin your hopes too much on winning so that That's you're not me. too let do not too let down there so you're like you know what it's okay for, it's you fine. have to say it it's, it's fine. fine i'm at peace so, yes you have to say it yeah but you don't want to secretly be like, I really <laughs> want, because if you're let down, you don't want to go back to, but I knew this is the space I'm a cut. Yeah. Girl! That's exactly me. You know, keep my expectation levels very low as much as, and, and it's very ironic because I'm a person of faith. I, you know, I scripture, says, say, scripture says we walk by faith and not <laughs> yeah. by sight, you know, reciting all the confessions of faith. You know, I'm a person of faith. But when it comes to awards, I always try to keep my expectation levels mm. low because over the years it has taught me that my value and my identity is not in the, in the awards that I win. For me, the important part in what I do is the people's lives that I've touched. Mm. That, for me, sets it apart. It's bigger than the awards. Finding myself fulfilling God's purpose for my life is bigger than any award that I could ever get. And don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that I'm not grateful for them. It doesn't so mean that them I coming. take them. Those of like, you that are voting, I'm on a high. I'm still on a high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm still on a high from that win. But that that has always been my attitude, that my identity and who I am and my value is not in the awards that I win. You know, because this is life, you know, and, and life throws throws unfair blows at us at times, you know, and, and that's just how it is. We have to learn to manage it and walk through them. So, M Mina, when it comes to awards, expectation levels, very low. Just go there, smile and wave, clap, you know. That that was me that night, you know. Keep that church smile going when you don't <laughs> win. You touched on having gone through depression yourself, yeah. believing in therapy. Did a part of that ever feel like, you failed yourself in, in some way because now of the fact that there is the, the spiritual part of, yeah. but you know God and yeah. have faith, you will come through this. Yeah. And then what gave you permission to be truthful 
with yourself about the reality you were going yeah. through and accept help? Um, you know, ironically, to which shows Uguti how how low I thought of myself. I was more concerned about failing others mm. more than I was concerned about failing self and failing me. You know, I was more concerned that I wasn't doing enough and I wasn't um, a great wife. I wasn't a great, perfect, no, perfect wife. I wasn't mm. the perfect mother. I wasn't the perfect minister, you know, and yet I wasn't the greatest Ntorozo to Ntorozo herself, mm. you know, and I think through my interactions with therapy and my pastor and quite a number of other people as well, and my mother even, you know, I realized that I bore, you know, I can't live my life like this because, um, you know, even going back to, 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 to scripture, Uwuti, you know, it says love thy neighbor as you love yourself. So I can't love my neighbor if I don't love myself. Mm. You know, I had to start all over again and fall in love with me, mm. you know, first so that I could be the best me to me, you know, in order for me to be able to fulfill all my other roles. I had to learn that the hard way. So it it wasn't even, I, 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 it didn't even get to the point of feeling like a failure to myself. It was more of me feeling a fa like a failure to everybody else, you know. Mm. And I had to learn, Uguti, hi man, that's not how it works. Mm. You know, I have to also prioritize Untorozo. I have to think Utaibo. You know, in all of this, where do I fit? Where does where does Ntorozo fit? I'm doing a great job with everybody else, but how good of a of a job am I doing with me? So what then would you say your belief on failure used to be that you would stress, you know, failing as a perfect wife, failing as a mm. minister, failing as a parent um what what is what was that failure what was it i think i think i think for me what 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 it was was thinking that i am the super human and thinking that i had the capabilities of god himself mm. you know and I had to come off of that high horse <laughs> um, that, and come off of that pedestal that I had placed myself on and just be human, you know, and, and realize, Wuti, I'm, I'm a being myself. I'm a created being myself. And the, the best thing that I can do is do the best that I can, you know. And I've realized, Wuti, failure for me is... <laughs> does not mean that I, I don't get the results that I, I want. But for me, failing is when I don't do the best that I can do, mm. you know. And that for me is what it is, you know. What are my capabilities? Have I done my best? And if I honestly say, then I have not done my best, then that for me means that I have felt. Mm. So it's not a matter of being perfect anymore, mm. But it's a matter of have I done my best? Have I, have I, have I, have I done what I can? Mm. You know, if I didn't do what I can and the best that I could possibly mm. be, then I have failed. So for me, the the what failure means has changed from that experience. So, where do you think it comes from? Because many adults. Um, that experience what you're sharing, which I can completely relate to, mm. can link having that attitude and that internal belief system yeah. to something from childhood. And, mm. you know, from what you've spoken about, uh, about having these loving parents and not in any way to take away from them being loving parents and you having a great foundation at home. Yeah. Where do you think that comes from this belief system that you have to be perfect to everybody and then I would go as far as saying to be enough. Oh man, um, I think it it goes back to absolutely childhood and what we saw and what. And the thing is, I don't think it's what we saw. I think it's what we perceived. Mm. Because I can I can definitely be sure that there were definitely vulnerable moments that our parents and um, that they went through and and um, not so nice days, you know. But it's 
I feel like it's possi- possibly what we perceived of them. We perceived perfection. Um, we perceived this, you know, that my mom can do no wrong kind of vibe. But, you know, I feel like it, 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 that was what caused us to have this facade of who we should be and, this, and created this perfection mm-hmm. that we should live up to, you know, which... which ultimately makes us tired and worn out at the end of the day. Um, I think one of the things that I've shared over the years that um, I feel like one of the things that my my mother didn't do so well was that my mother didn't grieve her mother in front of me. Mm. I was about to say, because our parents did not give themselves permission to be vulnerable exactly, in, front of, in us. front of us. So we would think vulnerability or any sign was of Was a weakness. Looks, right? Absolutely. Okay. I completely get that. I want to go to the lines, O double one double eight three oh seven oh two, the WhatsApp line O seven two seven oh two one seven oh two. Debucho from Santon, go ahead and Togozo is listening. Congratulations to Togozo. Thank you. I'm to on Radio 702. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Congratulations to You know, you know, I was with you at the summer when I was greeting you. Now, I can't do it. You know, that hug of mine, that hug of mine, and say, I'm your biggest fan. Look at what God has done. God that's an amazing congratulations girl you deserve it thank Aww. you so so much oh love you thank you Demo. <laughs> we've got thank zipo you. from middleburg hi zipo hi hi, hi Rilebu. um you know i love you right but uh, today <laughs> <from the post. laughs> listen it's okay we're together next week she's all yours I'm I'm so nervous right now. My I'm, so I'm I can't believe I'm talking to you. We're straight. straight. <laughs> me, me, no, me, Zipo. No. It's me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> no man, congratulations. Um, I actually was so nervous to call in. I sent a voice note asking them to ask you to just give us one line to just, mm. you know to one sentence <laughs> yeah, uh, we didn't you know, have budget to pay line. her today for <laughs> one line which is wait be, be, the of the show. before we put on the spot what's your favorite song of Ntogozo? um um what's the one is zulu worship i think um oh. yeah yo that song blesses me when she sings that mm. Zippo put me on the spot. Okay, Zippo, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens before the end of the show. Um, some WhatsApp messages that are coming through. Afternoon, trusting you well. Oh, God. Ntogozo, our powerhouse. Congratulations are in order for well-deserved three awards. So proud of her. She's been blessing us over the years from um, um, all the beginning of her songs and the shadow of his wings when I remember what the Lord has done and many more. Her voice, Mudimu, is it's so powerful, reviving and healing. My current favorite Amen. song, um, Sivuselele Ngosu Jesu. May God continue to bless her into many more years of true worship. Another one saying, Togozo, I feel like when you said apart from God, you discarded him a bit. However, you vindicated yourself when you said he provided <laughs> you with sisters that you can rely on. Everything starts with him. Ah, I'm the one who said apart <laughs> from God. Please focus. It wasn't me. It was me who <laughs> said outside of God who right <laughs> I wanted the human being so you can blame she didn't need to vindicate herself another one Dudu says in Togozo I thank you for being my guardian angel whenever I hear or listen to your music then I know things are going to be okay for me I love you so much from Aww. Dudu how much of what you do do you actually take credit for because I know um <laughs> Everybody's speech is always, I'd like to thank God, right? Yeah. You said after the awards, God is great. Yeah. But I love that speech that Snoop Dogg once made. Did you ever <laughs> hear like it? I'd like to thank me. I'd like to thank me. <laughs> because you woke up in the morning. You're the one who did the work, which yeah. also speaks to a big part of what faith I believe is, is it still requires action of sorts. So, yeah. I'm gonna make ask you a hard question. What mm. percentage? Mm. What percentage are you crediting Togozo for 
And what percentage are you giving to God? I'll tell you the percentage I'm crediting you with. <laughs> Yo, that is such a difficult one. Mm, we want to know. So that what is it was? a very <laughs> difficult one. Yo, 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 yo. Ayinge, guys. And the reason I, I ask this is because yeah. sometimes we dismiss the effort, the yeah. hours, the blood, sweat and tears, the sacrifice. True. To it's, all, it's not all God, guys. Because if it was all God, you could just sit and do nothing, yeah, and all those things would have happened. Absolutely. So, you answer, babes. I mean, I'll say 100, 100. 100 dog, 100 in Togo. So. You know what? I accept because it's 100% God's um, doing doing God things, Braji yeah. things, and 100%, 100% Togo so yes, efforts. I yes, accept. Yes, because it's a partnership at the end of the day. Because as much as God can give you the gift, um, it's ultimately up to you what you do with the gift, you know. Um, um, there's a story in the Bible where um, a master gives hands out to, uh, talents, you know. Mm. He gives the one one, he gives the other two, and he gives the one five. You know, the one that got one, he just hid it under the ground and he didn't do anything with it. The one that did, had two uh, doubled it and got four, and the one that had five also doubled it and had five, you know, and, and had five more, you know. So it ultimately depends what you do with what God has given you, you know. And, and hence I say it's a partnership, you know. It's man and God working together to achieve great things. So why didn't you say in your speech I'd like to thank me? Hey. <laughs> no, because also there's the element of, of, you know, Snoop Dogg outside of being a rapper, being a man where men are allowed to be like, but yes, I actually, that was mine because I did that. Yeah. Kanye does it well. And there's something about that. Why don't you ever say, is it because it's perceived as arrogant or that, <laughs> you know, because I'm like, yes, she did do that. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think, I think also because I'm trying to protect myself from, from being full of myself. As well, and I, I don't want to have you're pride. Doing, you're doing fine in that pride department. Pride comes before the great fall. <laughs> you're doing so I'm fine. trying to, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to navigate this life, yes. <laughs> you know, the best way that I possibly can. But, but absolutely, I did work hard. You know, I did have sleepless nights. I did sweat. I did cry. You a even couple argued of times. with your husband a little too long for that. Dude, <laughs> you know, we've been through it. You know, hanging on by. A, literally a thread you know <laughs> trying to make this work you, you know shouted at your child. Gane, male, Yo. gane, because <laughs> your poor child Dude. went to bed early one night because mama was having a bad day you know <laughs> so definitely i did work hard you know and absolutely God has been faithful and he's enabled me to be able to do what I do. So it that's why I say it's a partnership. Yeah. Mm, mm, all right. <laughs> We've got uh, Biula from Johannesburg. Biula, how are you? Hi, hello. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Go ahead. Good, good. Hi, Susan Tawazo. Hi, Biula. Hi. So, <laughs> I was at the concert last night where she was ministering, right? Mm. Yeah. And we had this moment where the power went out. <laughs> it was not just the power, it was specifically the sound. The mm. sound went out. Yeah. And it was a long time. I say moment as there was like, a few, no, it was minutes, right? Mm. And in that moment, I saw something. Um, she just continued worshipping. And we were worshipping in the crowd and we just went on and on and on until it came back on. And in that, I saw like the character of the minister, right? And I just wanted to say thank you, Sister Rosa, for your authenticity, right? Whether it's like through the losses or through the failure, through the mm. tears, we're in it and we're worshipping together yeah. and you continue to use your gift and your character showed so strongly last night and I just want to say thank you, thank you for a wonderful ministry and keep on keeping on and keep on winning those awards. Oh, thank you, Vula. Oh, wow. <laughs> Vula, thank you for sharing that story because that just affirms that you are the Beyonce of gospel right now. <laughs> Remember when her hair got caught in a wig and yeah. she just continued. Carried on. Right? Yeah. Like she was unshaken and I feel like in many ways you're unshaken, but there is something so big in your life that did shake you. Mm -hmm. Losing a parent. Yeah. Oh, heartbreaking. It's, yo, 
talk to us about what that did to you. Yeah. I mean, I'm 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 pretty sure somewhere you were like, oh, but God, ah, Marwena. No, you I know, definitely you, was. <laughs> you know, you you would have those moments, but on the really psychological and the psyche part mm. of it, how did you deal with it? There are many people listening who are absolutely struggling with, with grief, grief. Mm. Um, even years on. Yeah. And there's it's 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 not even at the level of prayer or anything else. It yeah. is something so like I can't imagine what that would feel like. I still have my mom. Thank you, God, that I still have my mom. Yeah. My heart for you, yo. <sighs> you know, it, it it I I think one of the things that I learned is that grief 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 can be crippling. You know, you feel like you're literally stuck and you can't get up you're 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 just going with the notions you know um i remember you know, i i went through it all hey i went through it all and um i tried to make sure that my kids got to see me vulnerable mm. um because i wanted them to see that mommy is not a super woman um and there is strength and vulnerability. It was so important to me that they saw that it's okay to be vulnerable mm. in a safe space. Mm. And um, because I, because that's one of the things I think I shared with someone that I felt like my mom robbed me of because I didn't see her grieving her own mother. So mm. I didn't expect it to hit me as hard as it did. Um, and because I thought she was like, oh, she's handling it pretty, pretty well, you know. But the truth of the matter is because I didn't see her behind the scenes, I didn't get to, to I didn't know how, what to do. I, mm. I was I was lost. I was like, but fine, uh, Inzanjan. What? How am I supposed to feel? What mm. am I supposed to do? You know, and 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 that for me was, oh man, was such a trying time. I didn't I didn't want to sing, I didn't I didn't want to pray, I didn't want to read the word. Um, that goes back to how God sends people. I had friends who would call me and say, I know you don't want to hear this, but can I just pray with you? Mm. And they would pray with me, for me over the phone. While you were rolling your eyes with wow, tears dude. in them. And like, cause and I'm like, oh, <sighs> the grief will make you like not eat. Suddenly the sun doesn't even look the same. Absolutely. And sometimes I'd get texts from people who'd send me verses. And I'm like, yeah, but I know that verse. But, but I'm still feeling pain. You know, where's my mom? I just want my mom right now. You know, and, and I think it, you know, I feel like, one of the things for me that really helped me through that was I was honest about it. I, I found a safe space. I found a safe space within my family, within my husband, within certain sisters. And um, I was able to just be and let them know. Would see. I remember there was a time where I even sent a text to one of my sister friends. And I was like, I, I don't understand what's going on i feel like i want to die myself mm. you know is is am i still okay and then she replied and said it's it, you just lost the biggest part of you obviously it's you will feel what you're feeling and it's okay feel it all it's okay you'll get through this and i was like okay so if this is okay okay then that mm. kind of settled me a bit and one of the things that really helped me was that there was a grief share group um that was created at that time i was even doing bible school mm. um so i yo my my head was going crazy cuz i was like but i prayed how can it like the mats is not matching yet because i i feel i felt like i did everything wrong right mm. you know but i got the completely worst outcome you know and ultimately and that was the biggest robbing of your of life, life not the industry one absolutely so, so if mom was sitting here right now what would you say to her oh man i would i would i would tell her how amazing i thought she was i feel i feel like i didn't get an opportunity to tell her how incredible she was how much of an inspiration she was how much i loved her you know, um, how much I'm grateful for the lessons that she taught me, you know, how how in spite of everything that she went through and in spite of all the trauma that she had, she did the most amazing job in raising me. And I'm just so grateful for who she was. And the beauty, the beauty about my mom was that 
she had biological children, but she had like an, um, a large number of other children whom she loved as much as she loved us. But never did we ever feel like she loved us half or we got a piece of her. Somehow she was able to love us wholly, wholeheartedly, mm. and still love all these other people and all these other, other children as well. That for me was probably one of the most amazing things that I could have ever experienced. I never felt like my mom robbed me mm. as a mother. I never have I ever felt that. And that for me is what I wish she knew, that how grateful I am. I feel like your children feel the exact same way about you. And I have to just say, Aww. I'm so proud of you. Not just what you are doing with your career, but what you have overcome personally and you being sharing uh, with your vulnerability. I adore you and I'll continue to fan go over <laughs> you. Thank you for Love coming. You I too. adore you. Love you so, so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> 702. The upside of failure. Sometimes failure is the foundation of greatest success stories.